YouTube team keep it clean what's going on it's engraven here with another video and in this video it's a celebration I mean I know Ravens fans been celebrating ever since Sunday night and it's Wednesday and I know they always tell you oh yeah the 24 hour rule well, that's for football players we ain't the players we the fans so we could have a 48 hour rule uh, and, and whatever comes next after that but Ravens fans have been very happy uh, and ecstatic because of this win over the Kansas City Chiefs. Um, but one of the victories within the victory was Adafi away. Uh, and this game has so many different storylines leading up to it. Of course, Lamar Jackson versus Patrick Mahomes. Of course, the Ravens being 0-3 against the Chiefs. Of course, uh, one story that nobody ever talks about, but we talk about it on here all the time when it comes to the Chiefs. Andy Reid versus John Harbaugh because for some reason, I don't know why, but that story would always get overlooked when it came to the Ravens versus the Chiefs. But anyway, um, one of the other storylines that had a lot of buzz going into it was Adafi Owe versus uh, Orlando Brown Jr., and the reason that that story had a lot of buzz going into this game, not because those two are rivals. No, I mean, you can't be a rival with somebody and you literally just got to the league. It was because Orlando Brown Jr., when the Ravens traded him to the Chiefs, the first round pick that they used to select Adafi away was the one that they acquired from giving the Chiefs Orlando Brown Jr., um, and with that trade, there were a lot of uh, people who just weren't feeling the move. There were a lot of people who felt like the Ravens should have went in a different direction. And there were a lot of people saying, oh, he he's so raw and yeah, he got athleticism, but he just hasn't playing, been playing football for very long. So I don't know why Ravens reach like this for a die fail away. Now, me, uh, when I watched film on a die fail away uh, after the Ravens drafted him, I was like, wow, this guy like. He has the uh, the 40 speed, but he got the football speed, too. And while he didn't get any sacks in, in, in his last year in college, uh, they did say his pressures were up. But my thing was, that's fine. He landed literally in the perfect spot uh, to be developed into something serious uh, on defense. And the fact that he does have that like crazy speed is something that the Ravens have been lacking uh, at the pass rush position for a very long time and not that you got to be the fastest of the fast to be a good pass rusher because I mean remember our last great pass rusher was Terrell Suggs uh, our last really good pass rusher was Darius Smith um, and they were not fast they were not Adafi away fast at all not even close but they still got the job done and even well can't really say after they left the Ravens they got the job done because Terrell Suggs went to the Cardinals they cut him he went to the Chiefs and he won that participation Super Bowl uh, and then Darius Smith now he's been killing it but now he's on injury reserve because he's dealing with an injury but anyway um Adafi away uh he certainly has been making his mark these past two games not just this game but the past two games uh and in this game against the Chiefs he let it be known like hey I'm here I'm here Last week, yeah, I had a good game. We lost, but I, I just want everybody to know that it was not a fluke. Adafi away, he had three tackles in the game, and he had one QB hit. Uh, he also had the forced fumble, and he had the fumble recovery. And the thing about Adafi away, um, when you looked at that game from Sunday night, he is a rookie, but he made clutch plays in clutch moments. He made several game-changing plays. And the last play that he made was the, the game clincher. And when you think about that last play, the game, it, it wasn't necessarily over when on his initial play on the left. Because he made two plays in one. But the game wasn't over on the initial play. But, and it still wasn't even over when he recovered the fumble. But then, of course, the Ravens offense, they were in aggressive mode, which we loved, uh, and they sealed the deal. But Adafi Away set that up uh, with the, the forced fumble, with just having the, uh, the technique and the willpower to boom, knock it out. He said, Marlon Humphrey, I know you've been wanting to get one of these for the past two games. You ain't really been trying too much, but you know what? I got you. Pow! Knocked it out. And then... Had the quickness, the aggression to grab the ball. 
And and the way that he did it, well, he was already on the ground, so it didn't like he could get up and run with it. But immediately, just give me that. Come here. You ain't going nowhere. He he grabbed that thing like it was a baby in a building or something. Let's go. And it was just perfect, man. It was perfect. I, I've seen, there's been a lot of good Chiefs fans, because this is with every fan base. It's the same way with Ravens fan base, too. You got some great fans, and then you got some not so great fans. And I've seen some Chiefs fans like, man, y'all got it. Y'all earned it. Y'all deserve it. Congrats. Great play. Great game. Ravens did their thing. They finally beat us. Congrats. Then I've seen some Chiefs fans where it's like, mm, you guys, you guys only won because of the fumble. The only reason you guys won because of a fumble, it was a fluke play. It was a lucky play. That's the only reason you guys got the win. And again, you, you're going to have fans like that every single fan base. Um, so it is what it is. But the fact that whatever you want to call it a play, whether you want to call it luck, even though luck is not even real. Uh, if you want to call it luck, you want to call it a fluke. You want to call it, oh, my goodness, it just uh, things bounce your whatever you want to call it. Guess what? It happened. It happened. And it's not luck, it's skill and smarts by Adafi away. And that has earned him not just because what I thought initially when I saw it, I was like, oh, okay, cool. Adafi away got a AFC defensive rookie of the. No, mm -mm, nope, nope, nope. Adafi away got AFC defensive player of the week, not rookie. No, 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 no. He got AFC defensive player of the week. And that's big because while it is an award, this award doesn't, I mean, it goes on his accolades. And this is a very early accolade for him uh, to, to receive and, and to accomplish in his career. Because, again, two games. He's two games in. He is two games in. And they have been two exhausting games. But he's two games in. But what this uh, accolade does, what this accomplishment does for him is... Again, we talk about how football is, is so much mental. This gives him a very big confidence boost moving forward. This gives him a, a very big uh, boost of reassurance like, hey, you could do things in this league. You could make it in this league. You can make some stuff happen. And we've seen it. And, and we're looking forward to seeing it some more and seeing it again. You are good. Now, again, he, what we want to see moving forward, too, is consistency. Because we can't just be like, oh, man, from these two games, Adafi away, he is that dude. Now, that's what we want him to be. But we got to continue to see that consistency. And he's off to a great start. He's off to a phenomenal start. So this is, this is a great sign. Um, now, everything wasn't all peaches and cream uh, for him on that Sunday night football game. And shout out to, uh, to Coach Sip to Tally because I was in his live stream and he was pointing out both the good and the bad and some stuff that I didn't see. Uh, there was one play <laughs> where the Chiefs, their offensive line was pulling, and the uh, I think it was the right guard that came over to the left side of the offensive line, and he boy he knocked the Dafe away on his back, and the Dafe away got knocked on his back uh, in the Raiders game too. Was it by Josh Jacobs? I think it was, but because he was he was coming through, uh, I forgot which gap he was coming through, but he came through that gap and pow, Josh Jacobs gave up, boom, blew him up, and he was whoa, boom. Fell right on his back. But, of course, he did make a play. Uh, the, the sack on Derek Carr, so that was great. Um, and then there was another play where Adafi Away was out on the edge. The Chiefs were running to the right side. They were running to the right side of their offensive line. And Adafi, he was going up against their uh, right tackle. And he was holding down the edge. And that was his job, his responsibility, to hold down the edge. Um, and the running back, he, he ain't have anywhere to go. But then Coach showed how Adafi Away... He tried to make an inside move to try to make a play instead of just holding down his edge. And then once he went inside, the running back went outside because it was vacant now, and, and he made a play. So that was a little little hiccup from Adafi away. But, again, he certainly made up for it. And, and the play that we hadn't even talked about yet from the Chiefs game, too, was when he got that pressure and that QB hit on Patrick Mahomes. With Patrick Mahomes, he really tried to just make one of them Patrick Mahomes plays. And it ended up just being a big yikes. Well, big yikes for the Chiefs, a big yay for the Ravens. Uh, because Adafi away got in and out with this play. I don't know if it was like a mix of a delayed blitz. Uh, 
It, nah, it wasn't a stunt because a stunt, if it was a stunt, then I believe Adafi Away would have been lined up on a defensive line. Or maybe it was a mix of both. I don't know the exact term for what Adafi Away did when he did get that QB hit on Patrick Mahomes that forced the turnover, that interception to Tavon Young. Um, but he, because he, I believe he was standing up with, at first. He was standing up. Uh, they were, I think they were just rushing three, and Adafi Away was standing up, but then he came over and then he rushed. Which gap was that? I don't even remember. But he rushed and he got through and he hit Patrick Mahomes, put that pressure on him. Patrick Mahomes threw it up. Tavon Young came down with it. Game changing plays, man. And that's what the Ravens needed against the Chiefs. I talked about during the game that if the Ravens were going to win this game, they were going to have to play better than perfect. Especially with how they started with Lamar Jackson uh, with the interception, the pick six. On the very first drive, and again, that, that was after he missed that deep ball to Hollywood. And Lamar got to he got to fix those those deep passes because those deep passes are game changers. Like last week, missing the one to Mark Andrews, uh, then this week missing the one to Hollywood. Where well, they both got to step on the on the defense. Um, but yeah, he so he got to tighten that up, and that's been an issue even from last year too. Uh, but the that, that pick six after he missed that deep ball, and then the interception uh, that he threw into triple quadruple whatever comes after that coverage um to hollywood as well so uh it's just and, and the chiefs like they it, again i told you if y'all would have told me that lamar jackson had two first quarter not first had two first quarter interceptions i would have been like oh gosh this game is probably going to get ugly but the ravens they uh, and then on top of that there was even another instance, I think it was in the second quarter, where the Ravens' defense stopped the Chiefs two times. They forced two punts in a row. They got two stops back-to-back, -back, and the Ravens' offense didn't score on either one. And I was like, oh, man. So Ravens didn't even play perfect, and they still crept out of there uh, with a win. So just imagine if Ravens played mistake-free football. But, I mean, you could also say the same thing about the Chiefs. What if they played mistake-free football? Game could have went either way, but this, again, is why it's a game of inches because every play matters that much more. But we're glad that uh, the team that made that many more plays ended up being the Ravens, and they ended up getting the win. Adafi Away ends up getting AFC Defensive Player of the Week, and we look forward to him making many more place um and and one thing about this that it does show too i love how these were these were actually pretty big games they were big games they were big moment games um in a fair way he showed up he showed up so that's a, a great sign uh for the future of him as an individual and the future uh, of him just as, as the team as a whole uh so we look forward to his progress uh, we look forward to seeing him just grow as a player. We look forward to seeing him grow uh, just as a pass rusher. Uh, we, we did, there were so many different clips going around yesterday and, of course, on Sunday and, um, of uh, Adafi Away. Just that little quick move he got on Orlando Brown Jr. Um, so many people have been retweeting that and whatnot. And he did his thing, though, man. We are very happy with uh, Adafi Away right now. So, again, you, you if you wear the number 99, you can't be sorry. You are not allowed to be sorry. If you're going to wear the number 99, if you're going to wear the number 1, and you're going to wear the number 99, you, you can't be sorry at all. You're not allowed to be. And no, Matt Judon was not sorry. He was not sorry. Because I know some of y'all are going to get, oh, 99, that Judon, uh, he wasn't sorry. Uh, but anyway, appreciate y'all, team. Keep it clean. I love y'all, team. Keep it clean. Uh, this has been a crazy week for Ravens fans. Um, I know, I just remember leading up to the game that uh, there was so many, <laughs> it was so many like, what's the, like gatekeepers of how to be a fan. Like so many people like, oh man, if, if you think the Ravens are going to lose, then you're not a real fan, man. And I was like, what? Like. Even somebody today, somebody today even commented on a video. They were like, oh, man, you didn't give the Ravens a chance to win this game. You're not a real fan. You lack that Ravens fan aggression. Real fans know that as well, long as we got number eight, we got a chance to win any game. Now, the part about Lamar Jackson is true. He gives them a shot in every single game. But nobody is anybody to say who is and who isn't a real fan 
Not everybody is a fan the same way. Me, I would love for the Ravens to, but I'm realistic, so I don't expect the Ravens to win every single game. And if, like people are like, oh, since since you're realistic, that that's basically what they're saying. Since you're realistic, then you're not a real Ravens fan, buddy. You're not. You're not. You're a fake fan, man. And it's like that. Just that. That never made any sense to me. Um, and, and like I said, so many people had been, especially with this KC game, especially with it. Because there were a lot of Ravens fans that expected us to lose. I was one of them. I was hoping we didn't lose, and I was so glad that we didn't. I was just, oh, it's so crazy. But, and there were some that were like, oh, well, we're going to win. And it, and it, there's nothing wrong with either side, however you felt about the game uh, going forward. But, no, nobody is, nobody is has authority over fandom of a team. All right, these are the rules that you got to have. You got to follow if you're going to be a fan. You got to be a fan my way. Not your way, but my way. And it's like, no, that couldn't be further from the truth. If, if you're a fan and you got your own set of rules, those rules apply to you. And that's it. You can't gatekeep over how to be a fan. You don't control other people. It, it, it's just That's just so, like, stupid to me. Straight up. Anyway, I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. And... Y'all keep doing y'all thing. Um, I will see you all later on today. Uh, we got we got plenty of videos for y'all leading up to this game. We got coming up against Detroit. Uh, but I'll see y'all later on. We are out. <laughs>